Welcome back to another episode of Cactus Core Plays Phoenix Wright A's Attorney. My name is Bobby. And I'm Sick Kevandre. And uh, Sick Kevandre may occasionally cough throughout this episode. Yeah, please forgive me. I'll try to edit it out if I can. Um, you might just get, like, silent stretches, um, but hopefully it'll be nothing. Um, hopefully. It's a lot better than it was yesterday. Yesterday he couldn't even finish a sentence. Yeah, um, we'll see how I do once voices come into play. Um... But yeah, last time we was like, hey, we got to go investigate some more. And then we tried to go up into dude's office. And then he was like, hey, get the fuck out. But we saw the picture. Right. That had him and McCree's brother and uh, Lana, as well as the trophy, which had a knife on it. Right. With a broken tip. Yeah, the tip was broken because it was circumcised. The judge didn't like that. Right. Um... He likes to serve his pizza the other way. Yeah. And then uh, there was the other thing in the picture, too. I don't remember what the other thing was, but I did notice it. Yes. There was stuff. Yeah, it was a big picture. And then we came down here, and we are talking to Gumshoe, and he's just like, hey, motherfucker, how's it going? Uh, you know, how Garrison talks. He confirmed that, by the way. He does just walk around work just going, hey, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, that's awesome. And then we were talking about the dark and the murder weapon and then we had to go do something i think that we're supposed to show him the picture yeah this thing hey check this out have you seen my attorney's badge <coughs> hold on one second let me let me share a little advice with you as a detective if you don't have a clue keep your trap shut oh <clears throat> fuck i can never get that voice right to start off with i'll uh Keep that in mind. Sheesh. Maybe not. May yeah, uh, apparently he's, uh, rude. Alright, was well, there anywhere we need to move to? Uh, no. I don't remember what we were supposed to do, but there's supposed to be where you can go here and you can talk to her and be like, hey, what are we supposed to do now? Uh, apparently she doesn't help. Maybe we go talk to... Someone else? Hey, Lana, how's it going? You got anything to talk about? Hey. Show her the picture. Yeah. You, you know anything about this? Attorneys and prostitutors have no business showing evidence outside court. Yes, they do. It's taboo, especially when the interests of both parties are involved. That's wrong, you dumb bitch. She really means it. No, that's awful vice. Lana. Okay. Uh, step in the back, died from a puncture heart and lung, a knife tip was in the wound, and that was... Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, Neil, 27, male, February 19th, between 7 and 7.30, fair enough. Cause of death, single stab wound, piercing heart and lung, died from blood loss in under 10 minutes. Weapon found in wound was missing tip. Doesn't really specify that knife, but okay. Hmm. Maybe we should go see Edgeworth. So you can do that, we gotta go here, and then move up. Yes. <clears throat> oh, hey, it did the type print thing. That means we're on the right track. How's it going? I wonder if Edgeworth is back yet. There he is. It looks like he's writing something. What, what are you doing here? Well, we just broke in. Said hi, motherfucker. He sure was quick to throw that paper on the floor. That's what I do when people come to my cubicle. Yeah, just toss it on the ground. and then I want them to trip so that they make me go home because OSHA's on the way. Yeah, that... Because <laughs> OSHA's on the way? Yeah. <laughs> Do we have just OSHA show up at our work every day? At any time that paper falls on the floor. They're there. Oh. That oh. makes two episodes in a row. Today and tomorrow with OSHA jokes in them. Boom. What? Boom. Tomorrow has an ocean joke in it? OSHA. Uh, OSHA joke in it? And an ocean joke. Yeah, it's going to have both of those. Yeah, because it's a zero escape. <laughs> we already recorded that. Ah, okay. That's right, I forgot about that. Anyways, tough day in court, huh? <laughs> I've had to live the past two years with rumors flying around. What's another allegation to me? It's <laughs> just fucking... Oh, what's that dude's name again? I, I keep confusing him. Uh, oh, Harvey Weinstein. Oh, what's shit. another allegation to me? 
Wow, that's kind of a dark. I turn. keep I keep confusing him with Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> They're not the same, but they're kind of the same. They were probably friends. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> That's kind of a fucked up thing to say. Cheer up, Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> I'm rooting for you. That's Edgeworth for you. Always brooding. Always trying to hide his real feelings by brooding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, what do you want? Unlike some people, I don't have all day. Hey, how's it going? Uh, forged evidence, what'd you do? There's no excuse for what I've done. Two years ago, I used false evidence to obtain a guilty verdict. That's when it all breaks down to, and nothing I can do erase that fact. But you didn't know, did you? I mean, that the evidence was falsified. The police department and the prostitutor's office share a bond of trust. If that bond is broken, we stand to lose everything. The police department's error is my error. My responsibility is the prostitutor in charge. Please excuse the cat running around. I'm that, not gonna, he's an asshole. That fact remains the same no matter what excuses I might give. Mr. Edgeworth. I take pride in my work. So tell me why? Why has it all come down to this? <laughs> Even Edgeworth can't keep this kind of emotion bottled up. What you got about tomorrow's trial? So, are you up for the trial tomorrow? <laughs> First, last... That's not a thing. <laughs> First, last year's trial, and now this one. It seems all you do is worry about me. To be honest, you're getting on my nerves, Baka. But Mr. Edgeworth, you can't just walk out on the trial. He can. Tomorrow is the last day. It's too late to change prostitutors. I'll bet that's what my superiors are banking on. I never thought that case would come back to haunt me like this. What do you mean? The list of evidence. It seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. My Grandpa Schindler had a good one. That is really fucked up. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Isn't this airing on Monday? Yes. Which is like the Auschwitz Memorial Day. Oh, shit. You're kind of fucked up there. I'm sorry. Now, it's fine. I mean, we got to keep it in now. But still, dude. <laughs> I'm sorry. When when Cavandre is sick, he apparently turns into me. <laughs> yeah, I'm Bobby now. Anyways. <laughs> he has to be very positive. <laughs> it's only half as long as most list. That is odd. After Neil Marshall was murdered, I became prostitutor for that case. I may not have been part of the investigation, but I knew what I had to do. Use the evidence I was given to prove the suspect guilty. That was really the only thing on my mind at the time. Say, we just saw a picture taken around that time. That picture? Something seemed strange about it. Uh, I'm just going to go on with the day of the crime and we'll present the picture after. So, could you tell us again about what happened that day? The day Detective Goodman was murdered. You were participating in a ceremony over at the station, right? I've never cared for ceremonies, but I had to attend that one. Because you were awarded this? Those receiving awards can't exactly skip out on the ceremony. They do at the Razzies all the time. It's a big deal when they show up and take it. And sometimes at the Oscars, too. Oh. Like, they... Or, or the Emmys, too. Like, they always, like, nominate um, Maggie Smith, but she's never there. They always just show a picture of her as, as one of the nominees. Uh, who? Maggie Smith. Professor McGonagall. Oh, okay. I don't watch enough of that to... Yeah, I, uh, sure. I've seen her be nominated many times, and like it's always just a picture of her rather than the video of her in the audience. Because <laughs> she's just not there. Nice. Uh, yeah, just skip out on awards. <laughs> I tried to skip out on my high school graduation. They wouldn't let me. Oh, that's the one thing I wanted to do. Yeah. Uh, I finished up at the office in the morning and then drove over to the police department. You finished up at the office. Don't you usually go to the bathroom for that? I don't like the quotation marks. There yeah. Phoenix. 
Yes, just odds and ends, bell ends, clerical stuff. I didn't plan on returning to the office that day. That is, until I was asked to take something back. Take something back? This. Oh yeah, Luchador Gant asked you to hold on to that, didn't he? I'm surprised I remember. <laughs> it's a yes. weird one. He was a piece of evidence in a case that was closed half a year ago. He asked me to bring it back to the prostitutor's office. That's the story we heard yesterday. So you came back here to the prostitutor's office because the luchador asked you to? I mean, who wouldn't? Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's right. Ellipses. Dear Strongbat, <laughs> how do you type on a keyboard with your box of clips on your hands? <laughs> Don't trust luchadors is what I'm getting at here. So this picture... Fuck. Was hanging on the wall in Luchador Gant's office. The vase. That was it. In the oh, yeah. And you mentioned the pointy spear, but I don't think that has much to do with anything. Yet. <coughs> Prostitutor Neil Marshall. He had just started making a name for himself. Looks like this was taken back when he was receiving the King of Prostitutors trophy. <coughs> Sorry. Speaking of that, there's something that bothers me. Yes? The trophy Mr. Marshall is holding. It's a little different than yours. Yes, you're right. Ah, I remember now. I broke it. Remember what? Remember me! <laughs> <laughs> remember the Alamo. Yes, I forgot about that. Everybody always forgets about the Elmo. Yeah, it was very boring when I went there, so... Yeah, and it looks awful now. There were many cacti there, though, so that was fine. Yes. That was what the official prostitutor's trophy looked like until two years ago. There's a story behind its design. A story? Sounds interesting. Would you mind telling it to us? I really wish you wouldn't. <laughs> That's fair. Do you need me to read this? No. It's Are simple, sure? really. I got it. Contradiction. That's what the award's based on. Oh, well, okay. That's a fine story, then. Oh, yeah. It's great. Alright. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Oh, hey, look. Here's the story. This <laughs> award originates from an ancient Chinese tale. The I, music went off, so you know it's going to be good. I think I know this one. In Chinese, the word contradiction is written with two characters. The first means halberd. The second means shield. Have you heard this story? I have. Yeah, Meta Knight's there. Me? Oh, uh, sure. Everyone knows that. Everybody knows that. Why don't you tell it, though, for, for Emma's sake? Very well, Mr. Wright. Very well. <laughs> Long ago in the kingdom of Chu, there was an arms merchant. One day he presented the king with two items. The first was a halberd he claimed could slice through any shield or armor. The second was a shield he claimed could withstand any weapon. Huh. Wait a minute. Objection! <laughs> Cock and balls. Right over onto me. I went like that. Yeah. Onto me. That's it. Cones out. He just coughed all over me, folks. He has a completely other side to go to. That's got books over there. I don't want to cough on those. <laughs> uh-huh. You'll wash. I... Rude. <laughs> I put my hand up in the way. All he right. put his hand up, so that way it guided it more towards me. I did not. <laughs> I didn't know such thing. He totally did. Rude, motherfucker. No, you... Anyways. Those claims contradict each other. I like the idea of lawyers just, like, yelling objection at each other in the <laughs> middle of conversations. Yeah, or history class that too very perspective very, whatever words are <laughs> but then again you've heard this story before right anyway as you mentioned the very descriptions of these items discredit them both when the king pointed this out the merchant was left speechless and thus the Chinese word for contradiction was born yeah it's my, just it's my... just the immovable force and the now, my understanding is that, that story goes on a bit, and there was actually a contest held 
for the Unbreakable Spear versus the uh, Unbreakable Shield, and the Shield ended up winning. So, you know, best defense. What would happen if there was an immovable object and an unstoppable force? Those things are a paradox. They cannot exist in the same universe. I see. Uh, The way I originally heard this question was a cannonball that cannot be stopped, cannot be deterred, cannot be slowed down. Whatever it touches, it just keeps going. And then somebody built a wall that could not be moved, could not be broken. What happens when the two objects meet? Mm -hmm. And the answer is nothing. It's a paradox. Those two things can't exist. But one of them could. One of them... Theoretically, yeah. Not even theoretically. In fantasy world, could. Like the monkeys and typewriters. As a thought experiment, sure. Yeah. No, nobody's saying that there are infinite amount of monkeys, infinite amount of typewriters living forever. Just it's just a thought it's experiment, a and you think about it, it wrong. It doesn't exist. <laughs> it can't happen. It wouldn't be Shakespeare. He thinks about happen. it so wrong. He doesn't understand. <laughs> it wouldn't happen. It's so awful. I'm telling you. Anyways, but yeah, those two things could not exist in the same thing. Uh, another version of the story was a acid that could dissolve anything. Which was an interesting idea, except the person who was presenting it was like, I have this acid that I can solve anything right here in this bottle. And it's like, aha! What about the bottle? What about the bottle? Yeah, and that's, there's a book. I just read it by the person that keeps getting recommended by everybody who reads, like, Dresden Files. It's like, oh, you should read this person, too. Irish Lass. Oh. Yeah. Can't remember the name. Sean and McGuire? Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, wrote a book called, like, Middle Game, or something like that. To where that was a big point of the book, was, oh, hey, we have this thing, it dissolves everything, even, you know, mathematical constants, but they just carry it around in a bottle or a bucket, and it's like, you're not even fucking trying. But it's a magical bucket. No. It was a bullshit book, it was awful. I hated it, don't read it. Oh, I see. <laughs> so the chipped shield and broken knife symbolize... Precisely so. They symbolize the merchant's items. The ancient tale ends with this merchant at a loss for words. But it's in our nature to pursue matters to their conclusion. Even if it results in something as ugly as this. Wow! Thanks, Mr. Edgeworth. I learned something new today. I need to cough. Okay. Okay. That's funny. If that's so, then why were you only given a shield? You'll have to ask Luchador Gant. I didn't want to buy both Pokemon games, I just wanted to get one. <laughs> Two years ago, he had the halberd part of the award abolished. Luchador Gant? Game Prostitutor's Trophy, updated in the court record. Alrighty. Two years ago, the halberd bit was removed. Yeah, that's just Meta Knight's uh, ship. Yeah. Now, some of you may be thinking, that's not actually a halberd. That would be this other thing, or whatever. A lot of those terms, when they got translated, was very poorly translated. There are so many types of names for the different kinds of spears that you just kind of got to roll with it. I so, also think that fancy types would try to just find an, an unusual name for their weapon. Absolutely. And all then the, spread all the that kind time. of bad information. All the fucking time. Nonstop. Like, I, I can deal with a whole bunch of the different sword classifications, like the oak shot, oak shot types and all that stuff. It's like, alright, sure, whatever. And all the Japanese types and a lot of the Chinese types. It's like, yeah, sure. And you get all these different types of axes, and I'm familiar with most of those. It's like, yeah, all right. But then I look at pole arms, and I just go, fucking no. Absolutely not. You people are crazy. I'm not going to try to memorize all those names. You picky bastards. There you go. Hey, kitty. But, uh, that was it. So now we got to go back and talk to Gan. The sure. Luchador. A fine Luchador. Oh, my bad. Or maybe the cough up queen. I'm perfect at that role today. <laughs> Excuse me. Boom! Bitch! Oh, <laughs> shit! Uh, okay. Uh, what was her voice? Oh, yeah. I'm gonna be coughing like crazy. It's gonna be great. <laughs> Would either of you care for a quarter pound of roast beef? Miss Star. I guess she's out of lunches. You certainly are the curious sort, aren't you? Kind of like the first person who sucked a cow's nipple to discover milk. <laughs> what the fuck? Care to <laughs> suck a nipple? <laughs> I'm the cough-up queen, bitch. <laughs> okay. 
Still, I never thought you'd go digging up that case from two years ago. Everyone in this trial was involved in the SL9 incident. Not only that, but the murder occurred on the very day the evidence from that case was due for transferal. This can't all be attributed to mere coincidence. Aren't you forgetting something? Uh... No. You know, that little scene I happened to witness? I think you're a crazy bitch. The instant Lana stabbed Detective Goodman with a knife. No matter how much of the past you dig up, it won't change what I saw. Roast beef is meant to be savored when eaten. Miss Star's hatred towards Lana. It all dates back to two years ago. Oh, hey, how's it going? We're gonna have sad story now? This is sad story music. Joe Dark, that's a name I'll not soon forget. She's on the phone looking at a paper. That's how you can tell she's very important. And she has woman. a tiny hat. Very tiny hat. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's very strange <laughs> compared to their rather large hats. Yes. We trailed him for half a year. Oh, the pressure. Still, I don't think I was ever more alive than I was then. Getting railed three different ways. Mm -hmm. Those days were steamier than a bowl of hot gravy. That's what it says. Yeah, but still, don't don't sleep with brothers. <laughs> it's it's not cool. Don't don't be doing that shit. So long as they're aware, who cares? Uh most people. Most people would care. Yeah, okay. Yeah, probably don't be doing that all the same. That's just the cowboy way. <laughs> it is not. The the cowboy way is that there's no girl involved. I've seen Brookback Mountain. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen many other cowboy movies in which there is a girl involved. No, you haven't. Oh, no? I don't think you've seen a single fucking cowboy movie. Does Shanghai Noon count? That's a good question. <laughs> um... And Blazing Saddles. Okay, Blazing Saddles is a comedy, but I'll go ahead and count Blazing Saddles. But I won't count Chiang High Noon. I have seen regular High Noon. Have you? In school. Really? Mm -hmm. I'm surprised at that. Because that's a pretty damn good movie. Shot in what it pointed out to be real time, because it starts at like 10. And they're like, in two hours, you know, gotta yeah. have the show down. And in two hours, they have the showdown. It's yeah, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, it was it was very innovative. I, I really liked it. I watched a lot of cowboy movies growing up because my granddad was really into cowboy movies. Yeah, my granddad was too. He liked the old Clint Eastwood stuff. I, I didn't necessarily watch them with him. Yeah, but I think that we should count Shanghai Noon. I don't think it's got should. a lot of the same tropes and stuff about it. Uh, does it? Yeah, does it? I should watch it again. We should watch it again. It's a great movie. Yes, the it is. The sequel sucks, though. Yes, but I'll still watch it. Yeah, fair enough. It's a bad movie. I'll watch it every single day of the week. If it's on TV, I'm watching it. <laughs> Anyways, back onto the game. <laughs> Poor old Jake Marshall, though. Must have been going through hell. You mean, because of his brother's death? They were close, those two. They went at me at the same time. <laughs> Only two inches apart. They were just like Kennedy's. After Neil died, Whoa. something took over Jake. He became obsessed. <laughs> Just like Kennedy's. Yeah. Seeing Jake like that made her all the more desperate. I'm just a savage today. I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, getting in all these, you know, Holocaust and Kennedy jokes. It wasn't... Okay, I guess it kind of... But like, look, don't, don't take it as like a Holocaust joke, man. Like, it's just a... A reference to the movie. What kind of joke should I take it as? A movie joke. Was it a movie joke? Yes. Because that movie was about the Holocaust. I remember. I, ha I actually haven't seen the movie. It's a fantastic I've film. heard that. Mostly what I know about it is that uh, his, his name is Oscar Schindler. He has a list. And it's World War II. And it's Liam Neeson. Yes. And that's it. Uh, Liam Neeson plays Oscar Schindler, who is a German and all that stuff, who is a fake Nazi. He's not actually a Nazi, he's just like a, a normal business type dude who sides with the Nazis. He's not actually there. He keeps on, like, sabotaging stuff so that way they're not feeding the war machine. Mm -hmm. And he's using that business to help try and get as many Jewish people out as he can. So, yeah. 
It's great. Seems like a good lad. Yeah. It, it's a fantastic film. I mean, the Spielberg movie, right? Yeah. Uh, interesting fact, Spielberg refused to take any actual money from it, calling it blood money. Okay. You know, it's not. I'm, I'm not going <coughs> to profit off the suffering of other people. He donated all of the money to charity. Nice. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Spielberg's an alright dude sometimes. 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 Anyways, so her. Her? Lana Sky. Lana Sky? My sister. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent delivery, top tier. That should be her voice from now on. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me, I'm the cough up queen, bitch. The best of the best were put on the SL9 case. This is a clusterfuck of an episode. <laughs> it guys. is. I like it. I of think. course they were led by that legendary duo. It might be one of my favorites in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Lana and Luchador can't? Anyways, how's it going? After case closed, that show's still on since like 1993. Yeah, they even have restaurants and stuff. That Conan O'Brien helped open. It's weird. Yeah, I, I really like Case Closed, but they don't make the dub anymore, so I don't really care. They still make the manga. Yeah, I'm not going to read that. Manga's good. That legendary pair was the reason we were able to keep up our investigation. That's why we were so shocked over how it turned out. Oh, and then there was a really good like couple of episodes that was, and then there were none rip off. Oh, uh, well, that's always going to be the best, and I need to know which ones those are. I think that was the start of the second season or end of the first season. I'll find I, it. I probably just need to go back and, and re-watch the English dub of that show, because I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I haven't watched it since I read it, and then there were none. So I would probably enjoy it more. Yes. You mean, with the forging of the evidence. Don't get me wrong, Joe Dark got what he deserved. Still, it was obvi the evidence produced in court was being manipulated. I agree. Totes obvi. Yes. <laughs> Metal Gear. <laughs> Items our team never found would suddenly appear, while other items were kept secret. But you don't have proof anything illegal was done. I have proof enough of what happened. Exclamation point? After that case, all of us save good men were relieved of our duties. Most without even so much as an explanation. Then Lana Sky transferred to the prostitutor's office and became a uh, luchador prostitutor. <laughs> Not specifically referring to Gaunt, just Chief Eagles Prosecutor now. Yeah. Or Chief Eagles Luchador. Yes. Sorry. <gasps> That's just generally true. Okay. Yeah. That'll be even better when we watch Shanghai Noon again. Um, <laughs> Lana always wanted to be a prostitutor. Nothing's quite as simple as it appears. Huh? Well, this guy was merely being used as a pawn. That's my take on the matter. She was being used. Why didn't I get to do that? <laughs> uh, do uh, we want to stop it here? It's yeah. about 30 minutes. We've, we've made, like, no progress, yeah. but all the same. Some some fine jokes. We need to, <laughs> I, I can only go for so long today, so... We'll close it out here. <sighs> That's not the first time he said that, folks. <laughs> that was supposed to be a turtle, but it came out as tiny coughs. <laughs> so, you know. I really like the idea of you voicing Emma as, like... My sister. <laughs> yeah, like Mandark. Speedy Gonzalez. Or Speedy Gonzalez. I was thinking more Mandark from Dexter's <laughs> Yeah. No, I guess I got Mandark's voice wrong in my head. Yeah. You're right. But, you know, we're the oh, yeah, same. That's, that's more of a Dexter thing. Yeah. Yeah, my sister, Dee Dee. Yeah. We, you gotta do that voice for something at some point. Maybe. He's almost got, like, an almost Germanish thing happening. And, like, I'm never gonna do better than Von Karma. No, not ever. Unless in the second game, there's another Von Karma, which there might be. There might be. I don't know. I've yeah. never I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, we haven't, you know, already tried to plan some of our voices out to make it more professional for the series, because we really like it. Yeah, we do really like it. <laughs> uh, but anyways, on to shoutouts. Cool. So that way we can move on and Garrison can keep calling people a motherfucker at work. I, I think he's on his date right now. Oh, snap. Mm. Garrison, anyway. on your date, don't call her a motherfucker. I hope he stuck with the Mario socks that I, I recommended. He better. Um, anyway. <laughs> um, so, I, you guys know I've been recently binging Lucifer, and I actually finished it yesterday. Well, got caught up to where we're currently at yesterday. 
Because there's still another season coming out. There's still another season coming out, and it's going to be in two parts, which is going to be frustrating. Um, anyway. But I was shocked that I had not done a shout-out to this person before. And I'm going to do a shout-out to Trisha Helfer, who plays Charlotte Richards in the show. Also the voice of Edie in Mass Effect. Yeah. Um, I went through and I looked through all of my Mass Effect shout-outs, to be sure. And I never did, which is shocking. Especially since... Hey, her- girl! <laughs> hey, girl! <laughs> yeah. It, it was... It was fun times. So. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think she's great. Like, before before Lucifer, I only knew her for Mass Effect. And due to the nature of the AI, she doesn't get to fully emote her emotions like that or anything. So she never super stood out to me. I mean, like, as a character, Edie is great, and I think that Trisha's voice acting does a great job anyway. But... I, I can see how voicing the AI would have its own struggles because she has to come off like that little bit of sassy, little bit of emotional, but still very restrained for the yeah, AI. Exactly. And I imagine as a voice actor, you're used to having these large emotes to have it come across very well because that's that's how you have to do in voice acting. It's the reason why a lot of facial actors, you know, people on TV and movies and all that stuff, don't make great voice actors. They don't emote loud enough. <laughs> right. But she she did it fantastically. I loved her voice. Yeah, and then uh, in Lucifer, I was blown away by her. I thought she did a fucking amazing job. Yeah. Just all around. Uh, she became one of my favorite characters in the show. So I, I think she well deserves the shout-out. Plus, she was in uh, Battlestar Galactica a long time ago. And that's really what I knew her from. I didn't realize she was the voice of Edie. <laughs> I didn't realize that was the same person at all. Yeah, so that's interesting. But, uh, yeah, I think she's great. So she definitely deserves the shout-out long overdue. Yeah. Uh, my shout out is going to go towards somebody I discovered on YouTube, uh, just on the recommendation because I've been watching a lot of Davey 504 and it suggested her. And it, uh, it's Fami, F A M I. And she has like a little star diamond thing next to her name. But if you Google F A M I base, uh, she is fantastic. Yeah, Holy she's slap. shit. <laughs> she do the slap, she do the tap, she do the base. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's She's really, really really good and she does a lot of covers of songs and she has a very excellent presentation about it i i love her bass it's got all the controls on it and i love it <laughs> but yeah I, I just found her and i've been listening to her a lot along with davy 504 but Agreed. mostly her now uh, but yeah all right guys we will uh, see you next time uh next episode we will still be kind of coffee boys yes but then that's going to be it, and then hopefully during the week we will recover, and then going forward we will be less coffee boys. And next week then we'll record quite a bit, because we're going to be all caught up to like current day after that. That's not good. Right. Okay, see you guys next time. Bye! Bye.